Lots of folks know that Niagara Falls is located where the Niagara River flows over a rock formation known as the Niagara Escarpment. What many people don't know is the Niagara Escarpment extends out into Lake Ontario and is known to avid anglers as the Niagara Bar. This classic submerged rock structure attracts bait fish, game fish, and avid anglers who know that the bar produces amazing fishing action year after year after year. This week on Fishing 411 TV, Jake and Mark Romanek showcase the most productive trolling strategies for catching a mixed bag of trout and salmon on the famed Niagara Bar region of Lake Ontario. One of Mark and Jake's favorite spring fishing destinations, you haven't experienced salmon fishing until you've trolled the famed Niagara Bar with Wolverine tackle spoons and Yakima bait spin and fish plugs. Oh my goodness, and it starts. Good Lord, woo! We're gonna back off on that drag a little bit. That baby wants to run. Let him run. <laughs> Jakers. That is a nice sound in the morning. Sun hasn't even popped above the horizon yet. We got a hookup. <laughs> we may have to back off on the speed just a little bit here, Jake, this guy's... He's heading for Canada. Perfect. <laughs> I love that. All right, let's see, about, see if we can gain some ground on this guy now. All right, the fight begins. This particular setup is something called segmented lead core. We use it a lot, an awful lot. Lead core is a sinking line. It allows us to take all kinds of stuff and put it down to depth. Today we're fishing spoons. And, uh, and lead core, which is a classic way to catch trout and salmon in the Great Lakes. And that's what we're about today. We're on Lake Ontario. We're gonna see if we can't dredge up some silver from the depths. That's the goal, at least. And we're off to a good start. Wow, feel the burn. <laughs> Ow. Ow. They don't tell you when you sign up for salmon fishing, but it's gonna hurt. Okay, take them nice and easy here. Oh, oh big lake trout is what it is. Keep them coming, Dad. That's a big lake trout. Oh. Woo. Uh yeah, that's a big lake trout. Oh baby, that is a big, big lake trout. Woo, 
baby. Let's get him out of the net and show him off. See if I got enough energy left to lift this puppy up. <laughs> oh, that's a lake trout. Oh, baby. What a start for our Lake Ontario adventure. Man, I thought sure this was a king. This fish has fought so hard. Man, well, I'll take him. I'll take that any day of the week. You know, sometimes that's just easier than trying to fight two fish at the same time. One of the things about trolling you gotta remember is that we're always going forward. And so when these fish bite, sometimes it's better just to let them hang there, land one, and then go after the next one. And as long as you're driving forward and keeping steady pressure on the fish, a lot of times those fish will stay hooked up until you're ready to fight them. It makes it a little bit easier when there's only two guys in the boat, land one of these big fish and then go on to the next one. It seems to work a little bit smoother. Perfect, Jake. Nice. Perfect. All right. All right, I'll show that one off really quick before we put them back. We're not trying to keep these fish today. That's not a very big lake trout. It's still a good fish, though. We literally just got out here this morning, so we've got to put the program together and figure these fish out. But anytime you're catching a pile of fish while you're trying to figure it out, I don't have anything to complain about. Special considerations are provided by the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association and by Stryker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepared. Special considerations are provided by Fish Hawk Electronics. Fishing without a fish hawk is called boating. Now we're talking. That's what we're out here for. Woo! <laughs> Look at that drag. Just screaming here. I'll turn the clicker off here. That doesn't stop him from screaming out a mile of line, though. Woo! We got a big one on here. I've said it a thousand times, but nothing makes my heart pound more than catching big king salmon on a downrigger. When that rod goes off and you're trying to reel it tight to that fish, <laughs> it's cool. It's actually good that we got almost all our lines out of the water because the boat just cut behind us. We would have taken our leg core lines off. Just stay tight on him. He's swimming towards the boat. Yeah. So today is the, uh, I believe today is the first day of their local derby, right? And so that's why there's a lot of salmon pressure out here, a lot of guys fishing, uh, which is a good thing. We like to see lots of folks out here, but uh, um, it does get a little bit crazy. It does get a little bit crazy. Just trying to stay tight on him. Yeah, that's a big fish now. Cool. I saw him, I mean, porpoise, the second that you, you set the hook on him as far as him coming tight on him, he was on the surface. I saw it was a big, big silver fish. You know, this fish came on a product called spinfish from Yakima, and it's a product that we've been fishing more and more. Uh, one of the things that we're dealing with this year to our trip to Lake Ontario, and we take a trip every, every year out here, one of the things we're dealing with this year is a little bit dirtier water. And so when I saw that dirty water, I knew that a paddle, a rotator, would be a really good presentation. And the reason for that is it creates more flash. And with spinfish, it's kind of a one-two punch. You get that rotator with the flash, you get the rotation of the spinfish itself, and then we're filling it with pro here, so you're giving it a lot of scent. Kind of got everything put together for a package that just simply works. Let's see, I'm trying to stay tight on him. Stay on that fish. You get talking and sometimes you forget <laughs> you're fighting a fish. It's swimming towards the boat a little bit. Yeah. But it's a good sign when you put this, this whole package in the water, and it might have been in the water for five minutes, and we're hooked up to a big Chinook. <laughs> like I said, I'm glad we don't have any lines out. <laughs> Let him have the whole back of the boat. Oh, yeah. All right. Now we got him coming. He's coming in the right direction, at least. Keep that big paddle out of the water. That really helps. That's a big king right there, baby. Hi. Come on, get him down. <laughs> that is a big king. Oh, hopefully I can show this guy off. Oh, my goodness. That right there is why you travel to Lake Ontario. We've come out here for a lot of years. We've caught a lot of salmon. That one's right up there with one of the biggest kings I've caught out here in the spring. I like to put a scale on him and kind of get an idea. But that fish kicked our butts. God, it's a big fish. 
All right, let's talk about that presentation we just caught that big fish on. That was a pretty special fish. Really, anywhere you travel, anywhere in the world, you start looking at king salmon over 20 pounds, and that's just a special, special critter. I'm going to show you exactly how I caught that fish. Basically, what I did is I used a big pro troll, it's a big paddle, and teamed up with this paddle, I used a product called a spin fish. So I'm getting more and more confidence with this product right here. One of the things with the spin fish is that it rotates in the water, but then when you team it up with a big paddle, you get that rotation, but then you get the snap from that big paddle. Now, a really nice thing about this presentation is we fill it up with pro here, so it's got a lot of scent in it. It's actually streaming out the holes, and so it smells good, it looks good. And then we're dealing with a little bit of color to the water, so having that big paddle just creates a little bit more flash. Now, the next thing that I'm doing that really kind of ties this whole presentation together is I run a two foot bumper in front of my paddle. The paddle itself has good rotation. But what I like to do is actually take a two ounce offshore snap weight and I clip it in front, two feet in front of the paddle. That creates a pivot point. And so what happens is instead of letting a lot of line out and that rotator is making big rotations, when you pin it to the line with a two ounce snap weight, it kind of makes that rotator not be able to create as big of a rotation and it creates a harder snap. So I add that two ounce snap right in front of it and as that paddle comes around, you can see that it creates that pivot point. From there, I run it off the down Rigger, send it down and it's game on but this presentation just simply catches fish special considerations provided by abyss battery power your pursuit special considerations are provided by the ultimate sports show tour michigan's premier sports shows yeah baby look at that Woo! Travelite Truck Campers presents the 411 on fishing. Hey, I'm Mark Romanak. Can I take a minute and talk a little bit about a trolling system that we think is very deadly? It's something we call two motor trolling, and it involves using two types of motors on your boat. One, a gasoline kicker motor, of course, mounted at the back of the boat, and secondly, an autopilot guided electric motor mounted on the bow. The way this works is we put the kicker motor down and bring up the speed to be fairly close to what our desired trolling speed is going to be. Say I want to target 2.5 miles an hour, I'd set my kicker motor to be moving the boat about 2.3 miles per hour. Then I'm going to go to the bow, drop my electric motor, and engage the autopilot function in the electric motor to keep me on a course. Now I can take the key fob and I can adjust my speed and I can tweak it very, very precisely. Because the thrust on an electric motor is infinite, I can get my speed right down to the nitty gritty. How nitty gritty? Well, I feel comfortable I can get my speed within one tenth of a mile an hour. With that kind of speed consistently, it really adds to your ability to catch a lot of fish. So what's the big advantage of two motor trolling? It allows you to use the thrust from your kicker motor to save the battery on your electric motor so you control all day long in all kinds of conditions, calm water, rough water, it's gonna catch you more fish. If you're looking for an electric motor perfect for this style of trolling, I recommend checking out the Minn Kota Tarova. I'm using a 36 volt on this boat. It works beautiful. Dependable motor, it'll catch you more fish day in and day out. That's a high one right there. There we go. We're just picking away at them, heading down the Great Niagara Reef. Whew. Come on, baby. This feels like a very good fish. Ooh, we're gonna give him a little bit less drag there. He is screaming drag out. Let him do what he's gotta do. Man, they are powerful fish. I guess there's not much you can do at this point except for watch your planer board disappear into the horizon. And that's exactly what's happening right now. Whew. And once he stops, then we start applying pressure and see if we can get some of that back. For those of you that don't understand lead core, we talk about it being segmented. It's a piece of sinking line, and we're using 27 pound test. Oop, there he goes again. We're using 27 pound test, and at the terminal end, there's about a 35 foot liter of 20 pound fluorocarbon. And in the back end here, up close to my reel right now, is braid. That's 40 pound test braid. And uh, so we can set the lure out, in this case a spoon, all the leader, all of the lead core, and then we can attach the planer board to the backing line. 
and, uh, and then set the planer board out to the side. The reason we love this is because it allows us to spread our gear out. I mean, literally spread our gear out. We can uh, have from the outside planer board on either side, they're 100, 150 feet apart. And so we're covering a huge, I mean a huge swath of water at any given time. And that's the beauty of lead core and inline planer boards, is that you can cover water like no other. You think about traditional salmon fishing with downriggers and dipsy divers, that's all good too. You need that stuff as well. But if you really want to take your salmon fishing to another level, get yourself some lead core and inline planer boards and you will be amazed how many fish you're going to catch. You're coming just like that. Nice. Look at that. That's Good the way fish, it's done. Huh? Off that that is the way it is done. Oh, yes. Give them an inch and they are gone. This isn't going to be the biggest salmon we catch today. It's not going to be the smallest one. Whew. But they're all good king salmon. Chinook salmon, a.k.a. king salmon, the king of the Great Lakes. You know, we've shot a lot of TV shows out here on Lake Ontario. More specifically, we have shot a lot of television shows on the Niagara Bar. The reason for that is the fishing out here is spectacular. Honestly, I would say it's probably one of the best salmon fisheries in the world. And basically what we're doing when we're out here is we're trolling structure. The Niagara Bar is this big drop off that's offshore out here on Lake Ontario. So basically it'll go from 30 to 40 feet of water, then out to 50, then out to 60, get a little bit past 60 and it tanks and it gets deep very quickly. Where it tanks is a big break and that's what we're basically fishing today. We're trolling back and forth on that break, keeping the boat right now anywhere from 80 to about 120 feet of water and we're targeting that top 40 feet of the water column right now. That's really been working well for us and it seems like a program that has worked for us year in and year out out here on Lake Ontario. When you look at the graph you can see that break. If you're like, well where is it at? Look at your sonar unit and it's going to show you right where that break drops off right where that water gets deeper it seems to be a shelf that those fish like to travel so we're just driving back and forth on that piece of structure putting spoons and spin fish in front of these salmon and catching a pile of fish there we go <laughs> oh, that made a coho. might be a coho yeah it might be a coho for a coho that's not a bad thing we like cohos a little blood that's all part of the salmon thing i guess it doesn't matter in this case because coho is the best eating fish we have out here that one's definitely going in the box and he's going on my grill. Coho, spin fish magic with a rotator. Getting it done today. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems, your fishing equipment experts. Special considerations are provided by ProCure, ruthlessly effective bait sets. I know it sounds crazy, but all the gear that we put in the water for trout and salmon, we clean it before we put it in the water, then after we catch a fish, we clean it again. The reason for that is trout and salmon have a tendency to bleed and get slime on the lures. That's not a positive, that's a negative. And so the simple process is just a little soap and water, and all I'm going to do is just scrub this spoon up a little bit. And uh, so I can get all of the negative odors off from it, then I'm going to throw it in the water real quick. I'm going to clean it up. So now she's real clean, and then I'm going to apply more pro cure. Okay, then I'm going to apply more pro cure. And now the spoon's ready to set back out and catch another fish. There we go. Woo! Hook back up again on the spin fish. Look at that drag. That is so much fun. Man, oh man, oh man. He's going to stay tight on him. He is mad, Dad. I'm not ignoring you, Jake. I'm just telling you we got a couple things going on here. <laughs> we got a floating log over there that was about to take out my planer board. We've got to steer the boat. And uh, you fight the fish now, steer, okay? Okay, that works for me. That works for me. You know, one of the things about this, this fishing out here, a lot of places you go salmon fishing, we basically will put the boat in autopilot and we just start going straight because there's really, we're fishing suspended fish, not really fishing structure. But out here in the mouth of the Niagara River, the Niagara Bar, it's a big piece of structure that's offshore. And I really prefer driving the structure because if you just put your boat in autopilot, you might be in 60 feet of water all the way out to 200 feet of water back to shallow water. Once you figure out the depth that these fish want to be, it's best to drive it and then follow that piece of structure Really, we're never going straight, you know, and kind of slide in a little bit, slide out. I'm just trying to keep a depth. And when you can stay on that lip, you hook up to these big kings. It's a nice fish, Dad. It is a nice fish. We'll see which side of the body wants to go. <laughs> he hasn't like made he up his mind. Back to this side, so this rod's got to go. I got it. I got it. 
Now he wants to go back to the other side, but I'm going to try to make him not do that. You ready? I'm close. I'm ready. Here's pretty... Ah, there we go. Good way, good way to control that fish, Jake. Sorry, he's going to become a fish sandwich. That's a perfect size for eating. I don't mind eating kings, but I really like eating this size fish. It's a perfect size. You got that spin fish just pegged perfectly in the corner of the mouth. So one of the things I love most about that spin fish is because it's two single hooks. When you get those hooks pegged in the corner of a king, boy, they stay licked. And one of the things about treble hooks is they're kind of your own worst enemy. You can use that leverage, but the single hooks really seem to keep these fish licked. Oh my goodness. I'm taking killer fires. And the fun continues. That is a absolute wonderful thing. That's something that's kind of unique to Lake Ontario too, is, is that uh, back home in Lake Michigan, we can catch our salmon, but usually it happens real early in the day or it doesn't happen. And, uh, but here in Lake Ontario, it's possible to catch fish pretty much all day. And um, the difference is the water clarity. You've got a little bit of green water here that allows these fish to bite a little bit better um, pretty much all day long. Keep them coming just like that, Dad. Yeah. Well, how's that for a meal of the day salmon? Hey, we've just absolutely had a tremendous time here on Lake Ontario. Uh, man, if you were looking for some silverfish, you might want to check out Lake Ontario in the springtime. I think you're going to be very pleased. My name is Mark Romanak. You've been watching Fishing 401, and you'll find Jake and I here, same time, same place, next week. Closed captioning is provided by Precision Trolling Data. Fishing 411 TV is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, StarCraft Marine, Suzuki Marine, J Sporting Goods, Smooth Move Seats, Niagara Falls, USA, Eagle Claw, Bill Lewis, and Yakima Bait Company. Over the place, kind of create a hole at the back of the boat. Oh yeah, oh he's mad, he's mad. He just saw, oh, oh man, that's, a, that's, that's a heartbreak how it goes. right there. It is. We fought that fish all that way, all the way to the boat. Man, that's a heartbreak.